Hello and Assalamu Alaikum. I hope that each and every one of my students will be doing great. So this is lecture number 10 and in this part of the lecture I will particularly discuss about the uh, reduction of the effects that are being caused by the burning of coal on our environment. So first of all I will discuss about the Clean Water Act and the Clean Air Act. These uh, as the name suggests uh, these are basically the acts that were uh, historically uh, defined for the restoration of uh, clean water and clean air. The Clean Air Act of 1960 Three is a uh, United States uh, federal law that was designed uh, in order to control the uh, air pollution because at that time it was estimated that it was correctly estimated that the amount of pollution in the air will be uh, potentially increasing exponentially as the population is about to increase. So uh, this law was designed to control air pollution on a national level. It is one of the United States first and most in influential modern environmental laws. And after that Euro 1, Euro 2 and so on these are defined. So this uh, was uh, defined in 1963 and it is one of the most comprehensive air quality laws in this world to date. Uh, the uh, second one was uh, the Clean Water Act. Uh, I think it was uh, in uh, formulated in 1972. The Clean Water Act in uh, in the Clean Water Act is a United States federal law that regulates the discharge of pollutants uh, into the nation's surface waters in that includes uh, basically uh, all the water reservoirs including rivers streams uh, coastal areas and wetlands and oceans the uh, clean water act was passed in 1972 and it was uh, basically amended in 1977 and 1987 the clean water act was originally known as uh, federal water Pollution Control Act. So it was basically uh, estimated that the amount of uh, water pollutants, the industrial waste at, at, at that time, uh, because it was being directly dumped into the water uh, sources, including lakes, streams, and wetlands, oceans, and coastal areas. So it was uh, at that time it was uh, clearly seen uh, that if we continue to uh, pollute these sources of water the uh, ecosystem will be uh, badly influenced because of these so the uh, other form of uh, environment, uh, environmental acts are uh, because of coal burning or uh, that sulfur uh, dioxide is produced and uh, sulfur dioxide in excess amounts uh, when present in environment will cause uh, acid rains so uh, basically uh, the sulfur is tried to be uh, removed from the exhaust smoke via scrubbers in uh, power plants so uh, so uh, scrubbers are uh, considered to be very efficient in air pollution to uh, control uh, the amount of sulfur dioxide that is basically being uh, released in uh, in the air during the uh, plant uh, manufacturing cycle uh, uh, scrubbers are uh, efficient and uh, they uh, greatly remove more than 95 percent of uh, sulfur oxides from the power pl uh, power plant stack emissions so a question arises how will a scrubber work once uh, uh, sulfur is burn and uh, it produces sulfur dioxide the exhaust gases uh, pass through the scrubber where it is basically sprayed with a mixture of limestone and uh, other chemicals uh, known as uh, basically reagents and 
water reacts with uh, sulfur dioxide and the reaction enables the sulfur dioxide to be removed before it is being released in our atmosphere so this uh, scrubbing pro pro uh, process basically reduces the sulfur dioxide emissions up to 95 percent and uh, saving us from uh, acid rains the uh, waste product that is being produced uh, 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 include cement and synthetic uh, gypsum because limestone is also used in the scrubbing process uh, so uh, cement and gypsum are basically byproducts and they are used in wall boards and white boards also uh, the other method is uh, for uh, in, uh, reducing the environmental effect of coal are uh, that we remove the impurities uh, from coal that naturally exist in them and uh, removing of uh, impurities from coal will basically increase the carbon content of that coal that is about to be burned and uh, therefore the uh, burning uh, efficiency will be increased uh, the basic equipment that is used in uh, this uh, process of uh, uh, eliminating the per uh, uh, oxides of uh, nitrogen and sulfur dioxide uh, also uh, they are capable of removing the particulates that include the uh, vapors of mercury and other heavy metals that are being released by the industrial forces in our environment so the waste material that is uh, being uh, uh, produced by these processes of uh, removing the sulfur dioxide for instance i was talking about the uh, process of uh, scrubbing the land which was previously used for coal mining and there is no uh, coal left in the mines the mines are basically used for the uh, landfills and airports and uh, golf courses because it is no longer uh, available for uh, vegetation the other method includes uh, carbon capture the carbon uh, capture uh, uh, methods uh, because uh, ca uh, carbon ca uh, capture ma methods basically uh, um, involves the method of uh, CDR carbon dioxide removal it is the uh, basic uh, term that I remember for uh, carbon dioxide removal carbon dioxide uh, emission sources are from the uh, renew uh, non renewable uh, fossil fuels uh, sources that include uh, petrol diesel and coal and natural gas so Greenhouse ga uh, gases are basically uh, removed uh, in order to uh, uh, green, uh, greenhouse gases are uh, removed in order to improve basic environment requirement. So carbon dioxide removal, uh, known as CDR, also known as greenhouse gas removal, is a type of climate engineering uh, in which carbon dioxide gas uh, or carbon monoxide gas is uh, uh, removed from the atmosphere and uh, it is basically uh, sequestered uh, sequestered in underground uh, tanks for a long period of time uh, so uh, sequestration or uh, these type of other methods are, uh, are known as uh, negative uh, emission technologies uh, that offset greenhouse gas emission from particles such as burning of fossil fuels and other non-renewable uh, sources of energy.